It's been called an obsession. My name is Malik. I'm 41 years old. Just a regular guy. I work in film and television in Toronto. And as my side hustle, I keep, breed, and retail rare and exotic fish. The fish in this tank can buy me a nice car. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Malik's Water Garden. I am a fish influencer. Yeah, I am. I live in a fish farm, and uh, I would have it no other way. Welcome in. Come on to my crib, <laughs> my fish crib. I usually don't like people in my house, like in this part of the house. And I'm like very careful on who I let in. There's about 3,000 fish in this apartment, probably a little bit more actually. There's about $50,000 worth of fish in my facility. And I'm the only one that can keep most of them alive. <laughs> this is my living room fish room. I retail them to uh, local customers as well as I wholesale to stores. I get fish from other collectors or I know some fishermen in South America. So as long as it's legal for them to export them, I let them know I want this particular fish. And once I get them, I usually get a group of 10 or 12 and I keep them in a tank six months a year. Usually they breed for me. From that point, I sell it to the people that want them. And uh, so they're now all over other people's fish rooms. So I grow all my baby fish out here. I think there's about 55 or 60 tanks in here. I try to make at least $5,000 from each tank. Angel fish are quite profitable, and I'm good at keeping them alive. So like if 1,000 comes, I can keep 955 alive maybe. If I sell them in three weeks size, I make 955 bucks. There's about 200 fish in this tank. Uh, you'll see them, each one is worth about 40 to 50 bucks. These Placos sell for about 60 bucks. So these guys sell for about $300 as adults. I've been offered $7,500 for my breeding group. Like, and I said, no, I'm expecting to make at least $20,000 from just my breeding group this year. <laughs> just from one tank. My target for the year is about 60,000 gross. I net about 45,000 a year. I freelance for film and television. Yeah, I do mostly stand-in, but I do background as well. I work on Star Trek, so you wouldn't see me and recognize me because I'm wearing a huge mask head, whatever, but I'm one of the only people that's willing to be in it for the amount of time that they need to be in the prosthetics. I don't take overnight work. That limits me quite a bit for roles and stuff, but I don't feel comfortable leaving them for that long. Would I ever live without aquariums now? You know what I mean? I've had aquariums since I was a little kid. My dad had aquariums, my mom too, and uh, I got my own aquarium when I was like three years old. I was born in Sri Lanka. I grew up there until I was about 12 to 13. There was a war going on, so uh, I'm a political refugee. Uh, we came to Canada, and uh, I've been here since then. My parents are big into conservation, so my dad always had a lot of giant aquariums in the house. So I wanted a tank since I was like as long as I can remember. And my third birthday, my dad got me a tank. By the time I was seven, I was breeding fish. And my dad was like proud of me to the point where he was like, showing me off to his cousins and stuff, look at my kid, you know what I mean? Like better than you guys type of deal. In the summertime, it gets really hot in the whole house. Sometimes I sleep right here in the middle of the room. It's comfortable and it's, you know, it's nice at night, all the water sound. I look around, I see all my fish as I'm falling asleep. As soon as I open my eyes, I see them. I make sure everybody's good. Like it's, it's more like an immersed experience that way for me. Usually I sleep better in here because it relaxes me after like everything I deal with. I mean, I grew up in a war-torn country. The fish take me away from that. I don't think about it. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm in a different world in here, right? It insulates me from a lot of things. I can come in here and not think about it if something happens outside or something is happening outside and it's out of my control, but I control all the systems in here and uh, I can kind of forget about all that and be in here. And I have PTSD, so <laughs> like what better medic medicine, you know what I mean? They would put me on 20 kinds of antidepressants or I can just have another tank. I feed my fish very high quality food. It costs me about four to $500 to feed my fish per month. 
I have to buy things all the time, like these boxes. I spend like sometimes two, three hundred dollars in a month. A filter would be somewhere between 20 and 60 bucks for some of these ones. Uh, obviously there's 25, 30 tanks. Medication is like a hundred dollars a month, you know, in general. What does your accountant think? Oh, he thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> Hey. hey how are you I'm good how are you I'm good I actually was gonna just remind you I'm streaming tonight at 8 oh, I'm all about it. Don't worry. so my channel's growing I put in a lot of work towards it this is usually where I like to live stream from because uh, the Wi-Fi is really good here and it's better connection so you know the the stream usually doesn't drop good morning everyone What's going on? New local Austin, welcome. And Big Tank Hank, welcome bro. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask. Toy Bun says my cichlids eat out of my hands. Amazing. Like that's really good bro. Ultimately, I want to have like a million subscribers and, and, and teach everybody how to take, take care of these animals because we really need to take into consideration that these animals are gonna go extinct without our help. The video we're making today is we're taking some fish to the pet store. And uh, so I'm gonna make a video for my subscribers. What is going on world? Welcome back to Aquamalik. Today is gonna be a really fun video, everyone. We're gonna go to the pet store. Yes, finally, out of lockdown. I'm going to Dragon King Aquarium and I'm gonna take them some brand new angel fish that were grown here. So without further ado, let's get into the store tour. Essentially, this is how you compare size. It's a big fish, bigger than a tuna. All right, I just prayed to God uh, to make sure that we're all safe in our journey. They're definitely scared, but the good thing is it's like a 30 minute drive. They'll be in their new tanks at the pet store and, and, and they're really good. I make sure I don't sell my fish to like PetSmart or anything like that. We're at the pet store. This is Dragon King Aquarium. They're the first person I usually call when I have extra fish that I don't want to sell myself. I don't have time to sell. We still have about 100 fish in the, in the car, so we're going to take them in and uh, get some good money from our friend. Pandemic style. <laughs> She's not open yet. <laughs> we got a few minutes to kill. I bought you some fish. Yeah. Good morning, Hi, how are everyone. you? I know him about four or five years. Probably, probably longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just figuring out how much he's giving me for the fish. So I have 22 of the larger ones, 27 of the medium size and 29 of the small. She said, I'll give you even 300. Yeah. I'm okay with that. And she's okay with that. Oh. And so we're good. What is going on, world? It's your boy, Malik. We're back at the Dragon King Aquarium. First time here after the last two years of being locked down in my own house. And I finally out and doing my thing. And I got some money. So now we're doing some pet store tour. So let's get into the store tour. This is like heaven for me, okay? <laughs> like literally. <laughs> Rainbow cichlids, really pretty. And the red guys. You know you have a healthy system if your animals are trying to reproduce in it. Really nice quality fish. Really, 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 really nice. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video till the end. Come check out Dragon King Aquarium. They do have some of my angel fish in stock right now. And I'll see you on the next video. I love you all. God bless you. It's not normal for a person to be living with this amount of fish. There was a girl that I was dating and uh, once she saw it, she, was, she broke up with me within like a day. This works for me, keeps me sane, keeps me from going out there and doing something that I shouldn't. Keeps me away from drugs. I used to have a problem with that, you know, in the past. This is me, I'm not really gonna change either. You know what I mean? Like I'm 40 years old now. And if I've been doing this since I was a little child and consistently, chances are I'm probably gonna do it for the rest of my life, so. I'm not willing to compromise. Like, I want to have this in my house when I move to a new house. Even the girl I was dating right before the pandemic, um, she wanted to buy a house with me and she said, okay, we'll work on the fish room and we'll get a basement for you, whatever. And 
she also wanted to have her stuff in the basement. So we broke up ba literally because she wouldn't give me the whole basement of the house. But that's the sacrifice I'm making. And ultimately, I want to find somebody or meet somebody that has the same kind of goals. You know what I mean? Hopefully, if that happens, it's great. If not, I'm good. So when I was four or five years old, I read this book called The Invisible Ark. It essentially talks about the need for conservation of species, right? Because of human activity, a lot of the biodiversity is going to go extinct. There's no way to save these animals without direct human intervention. So his entire theory is that we have to create these arcs in our houses and uh, we take on the animals. Without getting too emotional, like, if we don't do it, your kids, my kids, our grandkids are not going to see them. My apartment is like a spaceship. If I needed to go to space and they can pack all this stuff in for me, I can totally be in space by myself with my fish. I'd be happy. I mean, that's how I feel like when I'm in here anyways. So I'm good, I'm good.